Hello everyone, I'm going to do a quick review of the uh, Z-axis assembly uh, and installation uh, along with I'll talk real quickly about the uh, uh, RMP systems, the Pinion systems, um, these ones particular for the X-axis which I left for last. Um, <clears throat> real quickly on the Z-axis, before I brought this assembly up and put it on, one of the things I did while I had it still laying down is I took went ahead and took the steel off having found the position for the bearing block. Um, what I did is I went ahead and tightened up the uh, helicoil here. Uh, there's a set screw and then there's also a clamping mechanism on it. What you want to do is kind of rotate your set, uh, lead screw uh, while you have that assembly together and, and try and get the set screw to sit down inside a uh, thread area that will give you more uh, better contact and more security so that the screw doesn't want to turn. And of course clamp it down. After that, what I did was I slid this back off the motor, the whole assembly, and took it up um, in order to get this collar tight enough so that you get good thrust on the thrust bearings here. What I did basically was I took the lead screw um, off the mounting here and just screwed it on and brought it up till it was nice and snug, not too much torque, but just nice and snug, and that allowed me then to uh, have good um, pressure on the thrust bearings and then I could tighten the locking washer up or locking collar. Uh, with that done then I put the assembly back together, um, slid this back on, put the steel back on, bolted it down. I took the motor back off and then lifted it up <coughs> and uh, gently lowered it down in between the bearings on the z-axis until I got the lead screw in position uh, and then gently uh, made sure it threaded properly. Then after that um, what you need to do is kind of bring it down so that you have full contact on all bearing surfaces. From there you can <clears throat> work your tension on your adjustable bearings. Um, and then you basically have to clamp these two together, these two extension carriages together so that you can get some tension on the side rollers and I still need to do some adjustment here. One of the things I did was um, to try and get some kind of vertical alignment here. Um, is I use this one as the uh, fixed bearing block um, and from there what I used was this piece of flat stock that I have um, it's basically surface ground so it's nice and flat what I did was I laid it on the back plate and clamped it on uh, to give me a surface here and then I tightened this up to give me a nice flush surface here and this one then I left loose to be more of the adjustment side and then with clamps I pulled the two together before I tightened the bolts down. Um, like I said it still needs some adjustment I'm not too worried about it right now once I get this thing all wired up and running then I'll be able to use an indicator and what I'll do is I'll use an indicator to indicate the z-axis when I have it set up that way I can uh, move it up and down uh, by control of the motor and then uh, we'll adjust the uh, extended carriages to get this zero then from there what you have to do is you have to loosen this up on the steel plate and run an indicator on it then to true it up now in the lower position you'll be able to get at um, the two bolts in the back the four bolts in the back and the bottom and then when you raise it up you'll be able to get to the four bolts at the top so then you can kind of work your top and lower bolts um, to get your alignment and then you can tension the rest of them down and you know as it is right now then I have the motor mounted and when you put the motor on you you know move it around a little bit just to make sure that your alignment is is good with the helio coil and again there's a set screw and a locking clamp on the other end so that's about it for the Z axis at this point uh, real quickly we'll review what you have here for the rack and pinion systems here is your main rack and pinion mounting mechanism uh, there's a brass uh, bushing on this side. It extends up a little bit in the side. This is the side that will go uh, out from the uh, uh, mechanism on the side because it'll bolt onto the uh, uh, side of the extended carriage. There is the larger shoulder bolt or longer shoulder bolt that you're going to use here along with a washer for spacing. And Basically your shoulder bolt will go through there, the washer goes on the other side, and then it'll bolt onto the side of the extended carriage 
than I show right here. Um, and actually, I made a mistake. The longer one, the longer one is for the uh, gear and the pulley system. So the longer one goes on there, and that washer goes underneath it to give it spacing. The shorter shoulder bolt with a shim is what you're going to use on this side. Um, so basically, for the pulley, you put the bolt on, you put the washer on, it screws into. Actually, you flip it over. The end where your nuts sit in uh, is the side that you then put the, the pulley on. The slots in here are designed so that you have movement and to keep the nuts from spinning so that you can torque the motor down. They also come with uh, additional four bolts. I'm assuming what they've done is made a master set that will fit either a NEMA uh, 23 or a NEMA 34. So these bolts typically won't be used. And of course you have your pulley for your motor shaft and then your belt. But this is what the assembly looks like. Uh, basically at this end, this is the end that has the uh, gear pulley and then the motor pulley. And um, one thing I'd like to, uh, to say on that um, is you're probably going to want to kind of mount the motor loosely uh, so that you have uh, movement back and forth. Uh, this, you'll probably put the belt on uh, first and then put it around this uh, pulley here and then tighten it down. If you put the two together there isn't still quite enough because of the flanges on the side of the pulleys to get the belt on. So mount the motor loosely, uh, put your pulley on uh, or put the pulley on first, then mount your motor, uh, hang your belt and then put your bolt and washer uh, through here and then slip it into the belt and then mount it into this mechanism here. And then, of course, you have to spread this apart. Uh, you have to pull this together to get some tension on the belt. Uh, that, that needs a little bit more tension. Um, and I may make some brackets after I get this all assembled. There's two bolt holes here that are originally designed for their original system that use two bolts, um, an adjustment mechanism, and a spring. And what I may do is make a bracket. Uh, that mounts on here with another bolt so that you can actually just push on your motor and that'll help it ease up uh, make it easier for tensioning then the other aspect of this is the tensioning mechanism which is in a little bag by itself you get the tensioning housing um, this shorter bolt is what goes down inside and then uh, bolts onto the side of the uh, uh, extended carriage and then you put the washer on the uh, socketed cap screw, slide the spring on, and then it mounts onto the other side of the extended carriage. And what you're going to want to do is kind of put this in position and kind of snug the bolt. You really can't tighten it down because this does have to kind of move, uh, pivot uh, while you're doing the tensioning. Uh, then, of course, then this is the assembly socketed cap screw, washer, spring. It slides down there through the hole, and then it goes into the uh, threaded hole here on the side of the uh, uh, rack and pinion system. This is basically the setup here then in a finished position. So um, that pretty much covers all that. One other thing I would like to note on the washers that you get uh, for different things, there is a what we would call maybe like a smooth side and then kind of a shiny rounded side. Basically, most washers are stamped steel, so they get stamped through a die. This side here uh, tends to have a sharper edge, and you really want to keep it away from the moving side of whatever you're bolting it to and use this rounded, smoother side. So, for instance, with this, um, that washer goes on the bottom here, so I really want to have the smooth side. And I'll just set this here. You want to take the smooth rounded side and face it down so that it's up against the, the part that actually turns and moves. Um, if you put the washer in the other way, you'll get a lot of scraping and gouging and uh, probably premature wear. Uh, other areas um, that have that were also with the thrust bearings that you put in here. You get two washers, one for each side of the thrust bearing. Uh, 
Uh, so you want to put the smooth side or the rounded side facing the bearing uh, and then the flat sides on the other side because that's the surface that the bearing rides on. So just a little tip there um, that'll help out and help reduce uh, potential wear in, in the long run. Um, just uh, to kind of point out how I'm actually building this, um, I really have limited space. The only spot that I really had was this part of my basement. Um, and in here, um, at least till spring when I get some stuff cleaned out and I can utilize a garage. Um, in this area here, I actually had a very large drafting table since uh, I do design engineering. Haven't really used it as drafting table for a number of years and it's been kind of a workbench. Um, I figured I'd just use it as my basic base. Uh, you can see in the back, that's the actual top of the drafting board. I just took it off. So <clears throat> basically I've got a good solid steel frame uh, to start with. Uh, the only thing I had to do is I had to, uh, I got a 2x6, nice straight 2x6, and I had to raise it up so that um, I could clear the assembly on the side here for the rack and pinion. And then this side over here actually extends out a little past, so I had to raise it up. And I'll use a couple different mechanisms to bolt this down to the table then. Um, I have some angle brackets and so forth that I'm going to use to secure it to the 2x6 and then I'll use some other brackets to secure it to the top of the table. Um, so that's how I'm doing it, at least temporarily. And then, uh, you know, come springtime I can get some other room. I'll um, do some disassembly and build a proper base for it. Uh, but for now I needed to get this going, get it up and running because I got a, a number of projects that I want to get started on. and. I didn't really want to wait so anyways that's where we're at right now um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish securing uh, this down to the table here that I have and leveling everything out and then I'm gonna finish up the rack and pinions on the x-axis on both sides and at that point we'll basically be done with mechanical assemblies and then I'll have to start working on the uh, wiring and electronics and we'll cover that thanks for watching